Okay, so I'm going to do a little introduction to the various search options on Batchline. Uh, some of them are existing for people that already use it. Some of them are the new things that they have put in the new Batchline, which are quite exciting. So I'll start at the beginning. And so the first thing is, it depends on the situation as to what I'm being asked. The first search I usually go to is our shop stock search. So up here, we've got the option of, we can type a keyword in here, but what I often would do is in front of me and saying, do you have the new Elliot Page book? I would probably go, and if they stood in front and they want the book, I would do a shop stop search first. Oh. And with this, I would usually, you usually use two points of reference. So if I know the name, great. If I can spell the name, or even better. If I can't, I'd probably Google it if it's something quite complicated. And just to make sure I've got the spelling right first. So in this one, I know the full name of the person. So I pop it in that box and hopefully there it is and it shall appear. That means I know I've got it in stock and I would then hopefully go and find it. What we tend to do in the shop is then have a quick look at our stock record, which we then would just find down here the category we put it in, which will help us find it later on or try and find it. It is a hardback, which we can see here. So that kind of gives us clues as to where it will be in the shop. For something like this is brand new, it's usually on our table, but it particularly helps with sort of more obscure back stock. Um, if it's something, particularly if it's a book that could be in various categories, you're not 100% sure what it is, that's super helpful. The other thing that I love is the Biblio option. So you can click this button here. There's also loads of keyboard shortcuts, which I love to use. And Control-B is my favorite one, which brings up our BDS Biblio. So it gives us a picture. And for me, I love a picture because there's a lot of books that all have very similar titles and the picture helps us find it much faster, especially when you're on a hunt for a book that you've possibly only ever seen once or twice to know what you're looking for, what color it might be, et cetera. It's really helpful. So Biblio is your best friend. So that's kind of a basic, if someone's asking for a book, if I think it's in the shop, if they want it in the shop. It gets slightly more complicated if it's something that we may or may not have. It's not something I straight away know we'd have in shop. So for example, someone came in the other day and asked if we had a specific Ursula Le Guin title called The Dispossessed. So for something like that, Le Guin often can be within BDS, within Nielsen, however it's been saved or uploaded as Biblio data, when you've got a name that is double-barreled, has two parts, it could come under anything. It could come under the Le or the Gwyn or a comma or anything. So I kind of tend to avoid searching last names in that situation. And I'd probably go for the title on that one or because she's got an unusual first name, her first name. But for something like that, I'd probably go straight up to the search bar at the top here, type in dispossessed because it's not one I think we have. So it's probably going to be something I want to offer to order. So I need a bit more info. So we'll do a quick search. Hopefully it will work. There we go. So I'm unsurprised that it's brought up loads of info because obviously it's part of, it's a word that's probably going to appear in lots and lots of results. So there's two options here. I would personally, I'd organize it straight away by author and then I can have a quick scroll through and there we go. We've got a couple of liquids. Next thing I would do is over on this column here, we've got green, which also helps flag up because it's highly likely something like that gardeners will have in stock. So it's kind of a really quick way to kind of zoom straight in to the book it is that I'm looking for. So there's two options here. Again, I'd hit my control B for my biblio to kind of get an idea on what those two books might be. So they look pretty much the same. There's just two different covers. One is, this is the normal one. And the other one is an SF Masterworks cover, which some people are very particular about. So at that point, I can see I haven't got either of them on hand but I could certainly offer to order that in for somebody. At that point, it would then be clicking on a customer order and going through that. So at that point, we move into the customer order situation. But I sit here, I know gardeners have it, whichever one they want, and I can go through that process with the customers they want us to order it. So that's kind of the two basic search functions that I would use in the shop, either the kind of shop stop first, if it's something hopefully I think we might have, or if it's someone on holiday, in which case it doesn't really matter whether I can order it or not, it's not going to help them. 
or something that's a bit wider that I think we're probably going to have to go to the ordering. And I think the key thing here is I have enough info that I know that the person that is asking me definitely knows the title and definitely knows the author. Because the other option we get is where people come in with a sort of vague description of what the book might be, vaguely know what it might be called. I mean, in that situation, I'd probably go, if they're really unsure, I'd go with a Google first to try and narrow it down. But then the other thing I would do is the new thing that has been added to that time is the gardener's web search. So you can click that tab up there. In this situation, I didn't really need to use it. But for example, if someone came in and said, have you got a book called Layers of Meaning? And that's all they know. To me, that sounds like something I'm going to have to confirm some more information with them. So I'd probably go to a gardener search and try Layers of Meaning and go, okay, there's a couple of weird books that it could be probably going to be this one when someone isn't entirely sure gardeners gives us a lot more immediate information rather than scrolling through what is essentially a large spreadsheet of author titles and this that and the other also something like that here it would have obviously it would have come up with zero at gardeners so I probably wouldn't have been able to work out which one it was in fact I can see what happened let's have a look my guess is I would probably end up with a lot of information and be very it'd be very hard to work out which book it is that they meant so yeah there's a couple of options here there's these aren't really publishers that i know there's a couple in stock with gardeners I, I, it would be really hard to kind of pinpoint from that book they're after without kind of going to each one biblioing it kind of trying to do that so the gardeners option is kind of a really helpful way of visually being able to try and narrow down what it is you're looking for so at this point great part is that garden speaks us kind of gives us a status so i can kind of confirm that this is what they're after it's reprinting at the moment so the timeline on that ordering would be longer etc cetera, etc cetera. so the gardeners thing is really helpful from that point of view the other thing then once you're in the gardeners if they've asked for that i don't know if this person does but they might say oh well is there anything else by them and as people are familiar with how you search on gardeners there's a lot of easy options on how you narrow stuff down. So you can click on an author, see if there's anything else. There wasn't in this one, but you can kind of, there's a lot more ways of searching. So somebody wanted an Iron Cleaves book. So again, it could be that they've asked for an Iron Cleaves, not entirely sure what they want. It may be that it's something that they know that's been published recently. So you can narrow it down something in the past six months. Up, oh, yep. So here are the options probably go from there um, and then you can kind of click on it work it out from there so yeah like the integration of gardeners gardeners is always kind of where we would go to first because their search engine is a lot more forgiving you can put in a lot more options in that search bar it gives you suggestions it's you don't have to be so precise and have to have as much information um, and the other great thing is once you've found that and that is the book that you want if you then did want to order it, there's this now great option. So instead of before, we'd have to copy it from the website, paste it into here, wait for it to come up on batch line, then do a customer order. Once you've got it on screen, it's like that. You can do customer order and it pops up straight away and it knows that's the book that you're ordering from the one on screen. So it kind of just puts it all in one place rather than having to flick between different websites, different search engines, all those sorts of things. So yeah, that's kind of a new integration. And then a couple of other bits, which is just if someone's asked you to look up something and it took you a while to find it, they wander off because they're thinking about it and you want to go back and find it. You can kind of have a whiz back through the saved results. Because they're saved, they should be almost instantaneous to pull them back up. So you don't have to go through the whole rigmarole of finding the same book again. It's already there. So, yeah, I think that's pretty much all of the things. I think that's how we use our searching in the shop anyway, yeah.